Okay, sweet. All right, guys, when the most powerful man in the world talks about aliens, you listen. Elon Musk recently gave a speech at his recent SpaceX launch, right? He's shooting a rocket off into space, and he decided to talk about aliens. It's not the first time. It's not the last time, and uh, it for sure won't be the best time. But um, Elon Musk, aliens, we got to talk about it. So I have a special guest for y'all today. We're going to be joined by Ben from Laney and Ben. That's right. I'm not going to vet alone. We're going to do this together as a team um, and see what we can do. What's up, Ben? How you doing? Hello. Brother? How's it going? I'm so excited to be here, honestly. Yeah, man. Listen, tell us a little bit about your channel, what you do. You also look into UFOs and aliens, right? Yeah, it was complete mistake. I never started out with <laughs> UFOs and aliens. It was literally like the Miami Mall thing kicked off, obviously, back in January. And I yeah. like made a video about it and it, it just went crazy. And everyone seemed to really enjoy it. And I've always had a bit of an interest in UFOs. Like, you know, I've not been the most avid person, but, you know, I was always like interested in it. And, and then when the opportunity came, I, you know, took it with both hands and it's kind of evolved into trying to find out what's actually happening because you know like you probably know what what's actually happening is not what we're being told that's true man absolutely um yeah couldn't have said it better myself man well look the clip right yeah what we're being told is not the truth on anything uh yeah. really if we're being honest right um exactly that so look um again elon musk has made several comments over the years um you know, since he's really been a public figure about aliens, extraterrestrial life on different interviews with Joe Rogan, Tucker Carlson, uh, you name it. And he's always being asked about it because, well, he works with rockets. He's in the space program, right? It would make sense that what does he know about, you know, any secret government programs? Yeah. Um, have, they, have they noticed anything from their rocket shoots? They got video, right? I don't know something. And he always denies it. He always says, if anyone would know, it would be me and there's nothing going on. I find that a little, a little strange. Yeah, for uh, sure. I don't know. I mean, he, uh, it's weird because he always kind of flip flops between the two. He's like, no, there's no aliens. And I, I would know. But then he had comments like a few years ago where he was like, oh yeah, aliens built the pyramids. And it's like, <laughs> so where do you sit on Which this? It? Like, I'm confused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And look, for for those that um, have followed my channel, I have made a video about a gentleman named Tim Taylor. Search for it on Vetted Channel. He is Elon Musk's SpaceX handler. Okay, he's considered the top dog at NASA. And that guy gets download protocols from aliens. Like, he's all into it. So it kind of doesn't make like they haven't talked before about that. That makes <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah I yeah. don't know. That seems unusual. Uh, but anyway, look, so let's um, let me start this clip. We'll kind of pause it here and there um, as we go. And um, yeah, just talk about it. When you let's think about it. the question of where are the aliens, um, which I get asked a lot. Um, this is like the Fermi paradox. Where are the aliens? And um, I've not seen any evidence that there are aliens on Earth. A lot of people think there are aliens on Earth, and I'm like, great, I'd like to meet one. Um, you know, for a while there, when I was getting my green card and everything, it said alien registration card. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, this, this question of where are the aliens is, uh, I think, a very profound one, because uh, there were, I'm aware of no evidence of aliens whatsoever, which means that I think we're probably alone. Um, and <clears throat> if you look at the history of Earth, like how long has Earth been around? If, assuming that physics is correct, uh, the universe is about 13.8 billion years old. Uh, Earth is about four and a half billion years old. When you think about the how, lo how old is civilization, I think the, the right measuring point for civilization, in my view, or, or a, a good measuring point, would be the advent of writing. So the first writing uh, is generally considered to be the ancient Sumerians. Uh, where are they now? They died out. But the, about 5,500 years ago, it was archaic pre-cuniform. Pre in fact, I suggest... Um, it's like an interesting rabbit hole to 
uh, read about the history of writing. Um, so if you consider, say, like, okay, civilization, I think if you don't have writing, you kind of need writing for civilization. So, um, so it's only been around for like a little over 5,000 years. Out of four and a half billion years that Earth has been around, and the 13.8 billion years of the universe. So we're, all of human civilization is basically the blink of an eye. It's like a, just a fraction, it's almost, it's nothing. Um, and I think that that probably means that, that consciousness is incredibly rare um, and perhaps fleeting. It may not last for very long. Um, because otherwise we would have, I think we would have seen aliens, some kind of sign of aliens. Mm. I think the most likely explanation is that consciousness is, is uh, so rare that, that you, you, you it, and, and does that consciousness actually extend to another planet? Does that consciousness extend to uh, another star system? I mean, ultimately, if we're able to become a, a space-bearing civilization, a multi-planet species, and ultimately a, a multi-stellar species, and go out there and explore all these star systems, I think we may find that there are many long-dead one-planet civilizations. Um, hmm. we, and as you've heard me say before, we don't want to be one of those lame one-planet civilizations. I mean, we want to be a multi-planet civilization, ultimately be a multi-stellar civilization be out there among the stars. Like, you know, make science fiction, not fiction forever. Um, kind of make Star, Star Trek real. Um, that's, uh, so that's why I think that there's, there's, there's a high urgency to making life multi-planetary. Um, because this is the first time in Earth's four and a half billion year history that it's been possible to extend life or consciousness beyond Earth. And we've got to do that while civilization is still strong. That sounded more like a warning than anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, was, is it These like, rockets just go off behind him after he says that? Come yeah, on. literally. It sounded like there was, he knows about some kind of impending doom, like dying out civilizations. But I mean, mm. I don't know. What's your take on the whole situation there? Yeah, I mean, my first thought is, um, you know, anytime someone lays out sort of a sandbox or rules for how they're thinking, you can then use that filter for other thoughts. So, for example, Elon Musk gives the sort of the goalpost that, well, you know, the, the earth is 13.5 billion years old earth or excuse me, the universe is 13.5 billion earth is 4.5 billion humanity has been according. If you use writing as sort of the standard for us being an advanced civilization about five, over 5,000 years old. Right. So, and he's saying, oh, that's a blink of an eye. It's, it's nothing existence. Right. So, so therefore life must be rare. Therefore consciousness must be rare. But if we use that same sandbox, that that same those same goalposts, I would say, well, again, I'm stupid. OK, Elon Musk is super smart. I realize that. OK, but w if we flip the coin, well, then we've only been around long enough to know about aliens and, and search for them. So how can we be like I mean, that's like looking at the horizon for two seconds, you know, a split second. Yeah. Like, I don't see anything. I don't see anything. You know, yeah. it's like, dude, we, we've barely been around to even have these thoughts, have these conversations, send out signals. I mean, we've only been spacefaring civilization for a hundred years, not even a hundred years. So yeah, I, the idea that we can dismiss there being no aliens because I have yet to see any evidence and, and use the timelines of the universe is this old, the birth of, I think it doesn't make sense if you flip the no. coin right either way so i don't know that that was my first thought yeah i think for me it was like it was a very negative kind of thought process very closed-minded where it's like you know there's always this whole thing with like you know there is no proof of aliens until there's proof you know like yeah. that sure. and um you know it's one of those things where it's like there is if you haven't got the smoking gun i'm not going to believe you but like but that's that's well like all well and good to say but you know 
like you say, we've only been really kind of reaching out to the stars for about 100 years or so, you know, even just getting out of our own atmosphere and, you know, in an ever expanding universe with billions and trillions of galaxies and stars within those galaxies and all the rest of it, you're ruling out the fact that there's something like us out there, even if it's not like us and it's just, um, you know, a little organism or something like just something tiny, like still going through its evolution phase or whatever. It's still something. Yeah. Absolutely, man. I mean, I think that stuff exists. I think um, James Webb Telescope has identified some particular like gas that is only emitted from life on this yeah. other planet. They're supposed to I confirm it this this coming fall, right? Potentially. Um, I mean, that's huge. You've got um, the this European like Telescope Alliance um, that the maybe SETI program is so, it the SETI sort program? of work. Well, they're sort of working with SETI or not. I'm not really entirely too sure about that. But Professor Simon Holland talking about, That's you know, right. alien pictures and data embedded in a signal that, that came to Earth, like a selfie an alien took, like, yeah, yeah. To Earth, you know, um, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, the the universe is so expansive to dismiss it so quickly based on, well, we don't see anything is it's almost the same thing. Well, yeah, but it's too big to know either way. I, I think exactly. either way, I think to really just take a position either way is we, we have the same data to go off of. So it's like, it's kind of hard to, to be, you know, make a definitive statement. That's why when it comes to like aliens, UFOs, you know, it's a personal journey. And if someone's been through an experience themselves, right, they've seen a UFO or they've been on board a UFO or they've had contact with the NHI, right? Non-human intelligence of some sort that and their mind and their world, that shit's real. Yeah, for sure. And for them, it's like, that's my reality. I don't know yeah. about you, but my reality is this shit is real. So how do you transfer that? to somebody else is thoughts without any evidence or proof, right? They don't have, we don't have a crap. We, it's not like there's some museum you can go to, to see UFOs and aliens and. Well, that's it. And also the people that do try and do that and say, here are the craft, here's where they are. You know, this is what I've seen. They just get shut down, you know? Like, yeah. Good point. You've got people like Bob Lazar, who's been screaming it from the rooftops for like, I don't know, 30 odd years now. And, you know, some people see him as a tinfoil hat wearing nut job. And some people yeah. see him as like, you know, this like all singing and dancing, like source of information. It's like, yeah. you can't please the masses is the problem. Well, that's definitely a good point. I mean, yeah, you make a good point about a lot of people have come out and said, this is what's going on. This is what I've seen. This is what I'm a part of. Yeah. But Even that's David the problem. Rush. We They're just stories, though, dude. Yeah. That's the and problem. It, it is just words. Uh, and that only goes so far, right? That gets the conversation started. That gets people in the door. That gets people at the table. But if we're going to have dinner, I'm going to have to actually see a plate of food in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. That's Otherwise, a analogy. I love that. I've got the silverware. I've got everything's red. Lights are on. Everything. You've taken my order. Okay. But I got to You got to bring me something. Otherwise... Yeah we're going to sit here all night. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's it. I mean, like even David Grush, like his, his testimony was probably one of the strongest that we've had in recent history of 100%. like UFOs and yeah. stuff, but it was all yeah. hearsay. It was all yeah. like, I know someone who had seen this. He hasn't seen it firsthand. He's just, you know, retelling someone else's story. And it's like, yeah. it's like you say, the, the proofs in the pudding really like bring me that pudding. He has, I mean, it's not, he hasn't personally made it public, but through the grapevine, right? It has come out that David Grush does have firsthand knowledge. Oh. So supposedly, like he gave this presentation, I'll call it, right. in New York to a private group of people. Um, basically, like a billionaire put it on, invited all these people. Supposedly, you know, CIA, FBI was there as well. Right. as well as just regular people and he gave this presentation on you know what he's his investigation but during that presentation he mentioned having firsthand knowledge that he was actually read into a ufo program 
a, a UFO legacy program where they studied satellite imagery and could and knew how to track UFOs through our atmosphere based on a certain frequency that they've located crash, you know, crash sites through this satellite imagery and that he's a part of it. And that's what supposedly part of his op ed that he was supposed to release included was wow. his firsthand knowledge. But again, he he has never said that in an interview or the, those words come out of his mouth on video or anything. It's all from people saying that this is what happened at this presentation. But he has not. Um, what what do you say? Like declined, not declined or, you know, he, he hasn't said that's not true. He hasn't right. come out and said, you know, that didn't happen. And other stuff that has come out, he's he's had he's had statements come out and said, no, 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 that's not true. That's not true. But not this. So oh, I don't know. That's you know, I don't know. That. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't. I mean, that's that's a lot of think about that. That's a lot of data points. One, we can track UFOs with a certain frequency. Two, we're, we have an ability to track them through satellite imagery. Yeah. We have crash sites, right, that we can pinpoint on satellite imagery. I mean, David Grush is a firsthand witness. He's read into the program. I mean, boom, 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 boom. Those are all bombshells. So it's crazy. Um I don't know what that means. No, I, that's, I, I, I mean, that's the thing. No. Like we get, we get all this information and it's like, I see it all the time. I'm like, you know, it pops up on my Reddit feed or whatever. I know Reddit's not a great source of information, so please don't judge me, but <laughs> you know, it pops up and it's like, I'm like, I'm looking at it. I'm like, what does that even mean to someone yeah. that means something? But to me, like <laughs> it, I have no idea, no idea what this is. Yeah. Like, and then I have to go on like this massive binge of research to just wrap my head sure. around it. And then you get understand it. And then it's like, well, you, you finally understand what it means. And then it's like, well, there's not enough, you know, substance to that claim for it to even be worthy of kind of making a topic about, you know, it's just crazy. So where are you like before this, you know, Miami mall alien thing that happened? Because I remember that too. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah where were you at with sort of ufos and things like were you have you I mean, first of all have you ever had a, your own experience no nah, i wish i could say that i did because i feel yeah, me like neither. i've never you had know, one either i just want to i talk about it all the time and i just want to be able to kind of like you know be, not believe what i'm saying i believe wholeheartedly what i'm like reporting on but i want to i want to experience what i'm talking about you know Sure. um i want to go to these like seti headquarters and see these things that they're getting sent i want to that's never obviously never going to happen but i, I want to be able to be like yeah this is 100 percent the case um but in terms of like ufos and stuff before miami more i was always interested and i always believed that there's something we can't be the only things in this sure. universe if sure. we are then it's a complete waste of a universe because <laughs> humanity is awful <laughs> but yeah. um you know, I think, I, I mean, I was really invested in the whole David Grush thing that came out and then the uh, the 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 mummies that came out and that Mexican Congress uh, meeting, yeah. which was, you know, big news, turned out to be a load of nothing. But it was interesting. Um, and I just loved the speculation. Um, so then when Miami Mall came about, just kind of like thought, why not? talk about it and then sure. it's just kind of snowballed from there yeah right on what what did you i didn't really cover the miami mall stuff too much to me it just seemed too, too crazy i was just it like, absolutely okay. was it absolutely you know, was what it what it was your final conclusion like what do you think i mean the the speculation it's crazy to think the speculation is still ongoing now people still are like desperate for answers because you know the 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 police said that it was like three teens messing around with fireworks which seems plausible um but then there was no proof from the police to back that up i mean you probably saw how many police cars were there, there yeah like, literally crazy. like hundreds yeah, um, yeah and each one of those probably would have filled out some kind of report but there's no evidence for those reports no ev evidence of body cam footage that even people um under the freedom of information act tried to request that that footage. oh really yeah, people actually did that and they got nothing. They were just completely aired. Um, yeah. And, you know, it, it's just still a big open question mark about what yeah. actually went on. But, 
you know the speculation I, I mean people used it to really kind of benefit themselves like people claim to have been there when you know they probably weren't there um sure yeah yeah you know everyone was jumping on it being like i was there um it was pretty insane but they sort of attached themselves uh to the story right yeah, yeah. for sure for sure that That's... happens a lot uh in this community yeah you know, i bet be i you. bet you know it, it really does what, what i've learned i mean i'm new to this too i we just started the channel last summer basically right when david grush came out essentially yeah. right right before that i didn't know david grush was going to come out and we were all ready to launch the channel and then david grush comes out i'm like what the hell is going on now yeah yeah, yeah. Um, right that, you, that hit, was like, you hit it at the right time then to be fair because oh, that was huge perfect timing i, I mean I, I literally could not have timed it any more perfect but yeah i don't know what so what are you what are your overall thoughts about david grush now that it's been whatever six seven eight nine i mean coming up on 10 months i guess I or nine months i think he's he's got something like there's no denying that like i remember when he first kind of came out there was like the talk about his credentials they all matched up uh you know it all made sense and then it was like okay what else um his character okay well you know is his character wasn't demeaning or anything like that it wasn't you know it didn't come across like he was doing it for anything for personal gain or anything like you know by now we would have seen books go out we would have seen tv shows go out if if that was like if it was personal gain he was after um you know i think i think he's truly like it he's in it for the long haul like he wants to be like that bob lazar even if he doesn't he's going to be like that bob lazar he's going to be like people like that who you know kind of spearhead this community forwards with information and stuff and you know he's been very vocal about like arrow reports and all the rest of it and trying to kind of free the information to public the public so can't fault him for it yeah for sure man what about What's you that? where's your take on uh on him yeah i mean i'm kind of um just waiting essentially like he he brought up an investigation right he 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 gave us a a treasure map if you will of where to go who to talk to so until they say hey we went to these places talk to these people it's all bullshit i'm still on board with david grush's investigation right like until Fair. that is said and they validated some of his claims so just kind of stay you know keeping track of it yeah essentially uh to see the rest of his claims what what are they gonna determine about the rest of his claims so some of his claims that he gave so part of his investigation they have validated there's some truth to it not the not the alien ufo stuff though so mm. that stuff still has yet to be validated or invalidated that's basically what i'm waiting for um but to be fair the more i learn waiting for the american government to tell me what's true and what's not true i don't care anymore like i yeah. forget that why would i even I mean, it sounds like a, a stupid road to go down to begin with. I should know better at my age. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. We'll still continue to follow it. But I support him as a a person. He's a very credible um, person in this. And so, yeah, I, I look forward to what he else he's going to do with the community, for the community, what's going on. So, you, you know, you're from the UK, right, Ben? Yeah. So what's the sort of temperature over there and, you know, working with the government? Like, how how are things over there? Do you know what like it's so weird how polarizing it is you've got america right where literally everything comes out of america like every video i make it's it's linked to america in some way and it's crazy if i ever look for something uk based it's just nothing like the, wow. the only thing that i found is there was um basically like the there were some politicians who were having conversations um behind not behind closed doors because it was on camera but you know it was like it was nothing public um and you know there was a question of if it was necessary how would the uk government handle delivering um information about aliens should it come to that yeah um and basically the consensus was well we'll cross that bridge when we get to it like that they, they haven't got any ideas but they've got something in place which I found weird because it's like with everything that's going on, all right, you've got, you know, wars in other countries, you've got cost of living crisis, like that should be the priority, absolutely. But 
to think that there is something in case that was to happen, you wouldn't have that if you didn't feel it necessary, you know? Yeah. So I feel like there could be something, but if I'm honest, in the UK, I, I don't know anyone else who's doing what we do. It's weird. Like, I tried finding people in the UK that do this, and I came up literally with nothing. Oh, there's definitely some you know content creators podcasters that are out of the uk ireland um mm. uk and you know i guess maybe near london um but yeah i mean i think the same thing happened a lot of it gets american focused um but i think yeah when it comes to uk it's all like cold cases dude older stuff yeah, right Ocean forest for sure. is, you know i think cosford is that yeah in the uk cosford yep. right yeah um which are fascinating cases, but yeah, you're right. I mean, you hear that a lot. It's it's not as talked about as it is no. um, here, which is why a lot of fans um, watch Vetted from the UK, I think, probably in yeah. other shows, right? Because of that reason. Yeah, that's interesting. What do you think should change? What, what would be a good way to move the needle there, like to get people more interested to talk about it? I don't, I think, again, it's going to be one of those things where it's until you bring someone the smoking gun, there's not, Yeah. No. you're not going to be able to sway opinions. Sure. Um, otherwise, it's just, you know, me looking at other people who are talking about it, and that's kind of as far as it can go. But yeah, I, I don't think, it's one of those polarizing topics where people are either all for it, with no evidence or because of no evidence they're completely against it if that makes sense yeah that's a great way to put it actually yeah that's it's a just, great way to you can't win. that's you can't, interesting you can't win with them all it's not interesting that a lack of evidence will make you deny the thing instead of just being indifferent about it yeah it, does, that, yes. does that make sense yeah instead of just being well i don't know and you know um yeah, it, it again taking a definitive stance either way based on the evidence we have unless you've had a personal experience I think is a mistake in mm. my opinion. Again, if you've had a personal experience that sets you apart, I get it. You 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 how are we supposed to like how can I relate to that? I haven't had my own, so I have to go off of stories, evidence and there's there's nothing it's coming apparently, right? We've got um whistleblowers at least american whistleblowers that are supposed to come out this year um you know they, they have again the the i the definition of firsthand knowledge is is difficult to understand depending on who says it because people who have seen photos say well i'm a firsthand witness yeah. and then they're like okay well what did you see they're like i saw photos and you're like no 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 well hang on i thought it was people that touched the craft yeah that's a, you know that's who we want to hear from who because there's nothing else left we can have stories for days meetings you know this document leaked from 1969 cia nobody cares yeah bring the people that have that are working on these craft right now out i i just don't see anywhere any way to move the needle not just for folks from the, the UK, but equally Americans and other people in other countries are want the same, you know, standard of evidence, dude. Like they, they also want to see something. Absolutely. Right? We see something. Absolutely. And that's, that's the final piece of the jigsaw puzzle, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you know, we can, like you say, we can have witness testimony for days, but it just raises more questions than answers. Correct. And then it, then exactly. those questions then lead to speculation and speculation yeah. leads to misinformation and misinformation leads to people looking like, absolute nutters um yeah and it, it doesn't do this entire kind of community any favors because you know people are running around with speculation and it's it's crazy yeah man no you're right well look um let's um let's round this out here um and tell people where to you know watch you follow you you know if you have anything coming up you want to tell people about yeah for sure i mean like we're just literally laney and ben across everything um i mean if you are looking for hardcore evidence and strict facts stay with vetted because um, <laughs> i i you know i literally am uh, not i'm not um you know 
I, I, I love what I do and I try to be as factual as possible and try and be like, you know, bring a bit of joy to it as well. Yeah. Um, and because, you know, it doesn't have to always be so serious, but, uh, you know, I'm always trying, I'm trying to do what Vet does, but trying to avoid, uh, this is the thing. Everyone compares me to you because they're like, oh, I saw this on Vet channels like two days ago. And I'm like, well, you are going to see overlapping content. Oh, because definitely. I get is, the same thing, dude. We're People all, say to me the same we're, thing. We're all like, you know, after the same thing, we're all looking at this in the same places. Totally. Um, so the information is going to cross over in places, but you know, yeah. there are things that you talk about that I don't, there are things that I talk about that you don't. And you know, um, maybe I can bring a bit of that British charm to it. Yeah, man, absolutely. No, we need some levity. We need, uh, we need fresh new voices in this. Um, absolutely. The more the merrier, uh, for me, dude, and I think you do a great job and yeah, I look Thank forward you. to seeing more of the stuff you do and, bringing some humor you just you know the best thing to do i think i've learned from content creation as a whole forget ufos alien just just period content creation putting yourself on camera in the lights on a mic in front of yeah. people to judge you is being yourself absolutely right let's be real there's nothing better than just being yourself and let the people that like that come to you because if you try to be something else you one you're going to forget the things you've said or like how to maintain that it becomes mm. very hard yeah. to sort of maintain this facade um and people can smell inauthentic you know inauthenticity oh my god i can't say that word right yeah being inauthentic okay um we can smell it a mile away if someone's not genuine you, you can yeah, pretty much sure. smell it a mile away it maybe not at first but over to, right you watch enough the video, cracks like start mm, to show, yeah something yeah the cracks start to show so I think it's cool, man. You're just yourself and you just do your thing. And I think that's why people respond to you um, and probably me as well. Right. We're just ourselves. And um, yeah, that's it. So, you know, yeah. definitely keep up with what you're doing because you're onto some amazing things. And I think, you know, when when it comes to finding finding out something about this whole situation, you are definitely one of the the top people to be watching. So, oh, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, we're trying here. We're trying, brother. We'll do what we can. Well, look, um, thank you again for coming on today, dude. This was a lot of fun. I think um, I this that. is my first time collaborating like this, having someone else vet a video with me. So that was really cool to do, to be honest with you. Yeah, not be for alone, sure. Um, there. So, yeah. If the people enjoy it, let us know in the comments and we'll uh, see if we can organize something like this again. Hell yeah, absolutely. Well, awesome. Well, thank you, Ben. Thank you. Okay, let me... Um... Boom.